Richard has answers to the story of his great-great-grandfather and learned he was trying to start over with his family in South America. As an island, the sea plays a huge part in our history, from building empire to defending against invaders. Next up is Sarah Weldon from Cumbria. She has a deep connection to the water, and she wants to know whether she's inherited it from her grandfather, who she never knew. My name is Sarah Weldon. I am a full-time explorer. I live here in the very beautiful Lake District. As an explorer, I've been to the Amazon jungle. I've spent some time in Georgia, so I've been to the Arctic. For as long as I can remember, I've always loved swimming outdoors all year round. No matter what the weather, <laughs> I'm in the water. I have a real sense that water's in my DNA and exploration is in my DNA, and I'd love to know where that comes from. The only person I can think of who has similar kind of interest to me is um, my grandfather. As far as I know, he was in the Navy, but I don't know if it was the Merchant Navy or the Royal Navy, because my grandfather died when my father was just a young lad. I've got no facts or anything like that, so I'd like to know more about him. It's a bit of a, a missing piece of a puzzle right now. I don't quite know who I am, so I think to find out my roots will really just fill that gap and help me to have a better sense of who I am. Sarah's hoping historian and law lecturer on Yekka Nubia can provide those much-needed answers. Welcome to the show, Sarah. Thank you. So, we understand that you've got an interesting inquiry about your family history. Yes. And we also understand that you're a bit of an explorer. Yes. <laughs> I'm not sure where it comes from, though. Right. So. <laughs> so, where have you been to? Uh, I've been to the Amazon jungle, the Arctic, Georgia, uh, Latvia, Lithuania. I've worked in quite a few different jobs, and all of them have led to um, kind of research projects abroad, such as India. So, so you have an adventurous spirit. Yes. Perhaps it's inherited. That's what I'm wondering. <laughs> <laughs> Perhaps not. Perhaps you're just an original. <laughs> Let's start with um, your grandfather. The only thing I know is that his name was Norman. He died when my father was quite young, so he's a real mystery. Did you do your research under the name of Norman Weldon? Yes. Okay. There was a reason why you didn't find much. Aha. Now I'm intrigued. <laughs> <laughs> we began to research cases of such a name. Then we came across this. Okay. This is the gravestone of Sil Weldon. Wow. The Norman is the middle name. Okay. I had no idea he was called Cyril, yes. so that's that's really nice to have a name now. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. So, taking Cyril Weldon's name, we then looked for Royal Navy records. Yeah. This is Cyril Weldon's records. Wow. And he joined the Royal Navy on the 24th of February, 1943, just a month before his 16th birthday. Wow. So that meant that he was actually a boy when he joined. Yeah. So... Because of his age, Cyril Senior, his father, and Agnes, his mother, were required to give permission for their son to join the Navy. Wow. I didn't even know their names before, so that's something else new. So we can see on this record that his first training post was on board HMS St. George. It was a training school located in Douglas on the Isle of Man. Okay. It's difficult to imagine for a young boy of yeah. 15, far from home, far from parents. Perhaps he liked it. Yeah, maybe that's why he joined. <laughs> but we don't have his memoirs. But we do have another memoir written by somebody else um, who was a young wow. sailor who trained at the same place uh, around the same time as Sil. He says, on arrival at HMS St. George, we were almost immediately issued with mounds of kit, including a hammock and bedding. Our accommodations were in huts. I think we were approximately 160 boys. Now, one of those 160... Would have been my grandfather. That's right. One thing I remember at St. George, I was always hungry. <laughs> we led a very active life. We could never seem to get enough to eat. So they'd be given basic... Especially for the teenagers as well, growing boys. That's right. You march no matter what the weather, rain or snow. That was to toughen them up. It's now we find out what direction his career was headed in. He carried on training and progressed to the rating of stores assistant 
and looked after the ship's supplies. It included everything from clothing, hardware and food, which would have meant he was responsible for everything that was important on that ship, mm. including rationing. That's which an important job. <laughs> it is a very, very important, important job. job. Now, Sarah, you've been all over the world. Well, your grandfather, uh, Seal's crew in the Navy, also enabled him to travel. And he was posted overseas. And his posts would take him to the furthest edges of the world. In April 1945, as World War II was reaching its climax, Seal was posted to two Navy bases in New South Wales in Australia. Wow. That's a long way away. That's a long way away. <laughs> he was still only 18 years old. So on the 2nd of September 1945, the same day the Japanese surrendered in World War II, SEAL was posted to the aircraft carrier HMS Implacable. Now, this ship and this fleet was tasked with repatriating Allied prisoners of war. So during the two years that SEAL was on this HMS Implacable, he would have travelled to Australia, Canada, United States of America, Hong Kong, and to various parts of the continent of Africa. So, are you getting... How did you get it? <laughs> yeah, I think I know where my exploration routes come from. <laughs> yes. So this is certainly... You're not a one-off. No. And that's important to know, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Because you can wonder when you have some skill or some interest yeah. where you get it from. Yeah, especially connected to the sea as well. So this is archive footage of a royal visit to HMS Implacable, the same ship that your grandfather was on. When King George VI and Queen Elizabeth, the Queen Mother, um, toured South Africa, it's quite possible that your grandfather would have met King George VI, the Queen Mother. Your grandfather has led this amazing and incredible life where he's travelled all over the yeah. world. And in a way, you are a continuation of that legacy. Your desire to travel, your yeah. desire to experience adventure, Definitely. you're living that out. Definitely. And now you can feel confident. Yes. <laughs> that your characteristics, that your abilities... I can your... see where they come from. <laughs> <laughs> In a way, I, I hope that what we've revealed today has helped you to feel more connected to your grandfather. Definitely. The surname Weldon was always... I, I never really felt very connected to it because it came from this line of family that I've never met that I didn't know anything about, whereas actually now I feel like I can be quite proud of that surname and, and proud to carry that forward. So um, that's definitely filled in a very big missing piece. Yes. Thank you very much. That's, it's just incredible to have that knowledge. Excellent. So, yeah, thank you. Thank you. I think finding out the news today has really helped me to find out more about my adventurous side, my adventurous spirit. I always wondered where that came from. Um, and I can really see that in Cyril. I think there's a there's definitely a connection there. I think if we met each other today, that's something we would definitely have in common. Another success story as Sarah finally knows where her love of the water comes from and has that connection with her grandfather she never got the chance to meet. Coming up, can Brad uncover a tie to royalty? Where does the Polish prince come in? 